Hi, I'm Kalyan Karmakar and welcome to Foodocracy for Her. Foodocracy for Her is uh, India's longest running podcast featuring uh, women in the food business. And today I'm going to take you from Mumbai all the way to Kolkata to speak to someone who's known as Puchu Wang, but her name is Shachiko. And who is Puchu Wang? Well, as food lovers uh, of Kolkata will tell you, she's the daughter of Doma D, as she's uh, uh, lovingly known, Doma Wang. So we've spoken to Doma Wang very early on in the Foodocracy for Her series, which was almost two years back. And uh, let's now hear from her daughter and see how she's taking the uh, legacy ahead. So in a bit, Puchu Wang. So there she is, the person everyone knows as uh, Puchu Wang, but uh, formerly she is Sachiko Set. Uh, so uh, how do you uh, um, how do you introduce yourself, Puchu, to people, Puchu or Sachiko? I say I think mostly uh, Sachiko only, but because of my Insta now, it was, <laughs> because I am not a very social person, so I just put a very my profile was private before. Yeah, I had named it Puchu Wang. It was just. <laughs> Okay, so then we will call you Sachiko. So, uh, you know, because um, I have always uh, been to uh, Thakali, except the, no, even right from the first time when I went to Blue Pop, Poppy, always with friends who've uh, known you, starting with Kanishko and Manishita, of course. So everyone calls you Puchu there, so I've got used to Puchu. So Puchu is nickname, and, and you know, the Bengali uh, tradition of it. Uh, so my nickname is Raja, so at least, you know, okay. <laughs> that's, that's not that bad. Uh, but we Puchu. Have a dark now. <laughs> Dark noun. So Puchu is uh, tiny, right? Puchu. Puchu means tiny. Yes. Yeah, because when, when kids are opposite of it. <laughs> no, no, no. But, <laughs> no, but when, when people are kids, they're called Puchu, Puchke, Puchka, yeah. <laughs> whatnot. So then Sachiko said, so and, and Sachiko says that she's not very social, and that's true, right? Because if you go to Thakali and all that, uh, you know, uh, you might meet Domadi if she's around and, and stuff, and the food keeps coming, food keeps coming. And then you'll realize that she's there because you might be now searching that who's this uh, top 30 mint uh, chef, young chef from Calcutta, you come to see her. But but um, really looking forward to hearing uh, uh, from you. So uh, Sachiko, you, you are Kalimpong born. Yes, I was born in Kalimpong. Huh. And, um, like mom, mom is also Kalimpong born. Yes. Yeah. So mom was living in uh, Calcutta then and she'd gone there for uh, this thing or was she living in Kalimpong at this point? No, she was born and brought up in Kalimpong. And then I think to, after her class 12, she came to Calcutta to study. So so when you were born, uh, mom was living in uh, Calcutta by then. She might have yes, gone yes, back yes. to Calcutta. So then, uh, so how, lo how long were you in Kalimpong? Kalimpong, I was, like, I studied there for one year. Okay. In As UK a kid? Day. Ah. Yes, as a kid, UKG. Ah. Then mom got me back. Then I studied in Calcutta for uh, five years. Okay. Then I went to Sikkim to study. Mm -hmm. Where in Sikkim? <laughs> Gangtok? Martham. Mm -hmm. So there's Martham. a school called St. Joseph's mm -hmm. School Martham. So okay. it's a sister concern of St. Joseph's Convent, Kalingpong. So my UKG okay. was in Kalingpong and then I came yeah. back to Sikkim. Then for nine and ten, I came back to Calcutta again. Yeah. So that, that. that's a lot of movement uh, in your growing up years, which in a way for me also happened because, uh, you know, by the time I was in my 10th, I was in three cities. And then after that, it's only after I finished uh, college that I came to Bombay. And then, uh, so um, which, which, which city were you more for, fond of? Whether, was it your school years in Markham and Sikkim or Kalimpong or Calcutta? Yeah, where are you the happiest? Where, where were you the happiest? The happiest, I would say, was my youth in Kalimpong, the most memorable, because every holiday we would go there. Okay. You know, so at, at, when I was studying also in school here, it used to be like, when would the holidays come, so we could go back. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, in, in Calcutta, all we knew about Kalimpong, of course, people would go there as tourists. You know, there was this confectionery chain called Kalimpong. I don't know if it's still there. Like, you know how there's Jolly Job <laughs> and Kathleen? Yeah. There was one Kalimpong cake also. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> but I don't know. When we were small, there were glitteries and uh, cake startup. Ah, no, no. So this Kalimpong I'm talking about was in Calcutta, the chain. Yeah, uh, know, like like Jolly like Joe and, and um, Kathleen. Also. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, so tell us a bit about uh, Kalimpong because uh, you know people don't know much about it. And if uh, if I if I remember right, your your grandfather was a noodle maker, right? Yes. 
So, so tell us a bit about uh, Kalimpong and life in the hills because one doesn't know much, but there's so much interest. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> my grandfather was one of the first Noji makers in Kalimpong. Mm -hmm. And then um, the factory was below our house in the basement. Wow. And uh, we would stay above. And so, like, um, watching noodles get made was very, like, um, very normal to me. <laughs> now wow. that I grow up and I look back and I realize it was fascinating. Yeah. Because we've so, only seen noodles come out of a packet. You tear a packet and noodles are there. So, so here I see four guys kneading the uh, dough, you know, and then like, there were cartons of eggs being cracked on the dough and it was just such a beautiful process. Now I look back, the dough just then put get got into the machine, the machine gets the dough pulled out and then noodles come out. And this is the then famous Kalimpong then, noodles. This is the famous Kalimpong noodles. Uh, yeah, it's sun dried. Yeah. So there is no steaming process because I was researching once for to do make noodles in Calcutta. But then yeah. I wouldn't get the same result because of the humidity, you will have to steam the raw noodles. Okay. Okay. So this was sun dried. This was sun dried. I, I believe some noodles. some noodles are also fried, right? Before they're packed. Like yes, what we get. Noodles mostly. Okay. So not not the noodles which we boil and cook. So the noodles which you need no, to boil even first. Fried noodles you have to boil, but yes, like pasta and. Uh, you know the one uh, with which you would make you chow, chow mein and all that at home. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that is that is fried? fried? That is steamed. No, that those are not fried. Yes. Okay, those are steamed. Yes. So so you would see uh, them packing the noodles and all of that. And yes. Then so what? then after that, all the noodles get extruded in a wooden skewer. Yeah. And then one staff takes three, four of the wooden sticks and go. We had to go. So there was the building and we called it the building. I don't know how to do that. So it would go to dry in the building. <laughs> but it was like that, no? When you were kids, you would call something like a building, uh, you know, Unon God or, you know, it wouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. So, so, it's, so was it like more like a, a building just for the drying of the noodles? Was it like a... Like a, a no, so it was, we had taken, I mean, my grandfather had taken the terrace for rent. So we could okay. dry our noodles. Ah, so on the chart. On the, so like, because our house had a sloping roof. Wow. Did, did it snow in winter? Did it no, snow? No, it didn't snow so the slope was because snow of the snow. rains, because of the rains and all that. Rains also, and I think it was a very old house. So maybe during those days, before Tibet was taken, by China, those days it would have snowed because it was a part of the Silk Road. Hmm. Like the traders yeah. would pass and so it was more of a, uh, yeah. it still is. Like you get the best khadas or the ceremonial stuff. Hmm. You get the best uh, traditional attire there. Like it's still a hub for business. Yeah. So, 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 so were you kids like allowed to sort of go to the noodle factory and see what is happening or go to the building? Yes, yes, we were encouraged to help always because um, once we were free, if we were free, we would be told to pack the noodles. So we would put the, if it was a vegetarian noodle, then Without we put the egg. green wrapper. If it's a, yeah, if it's an egg noodle, then we put the red wrapper and then there's a thin cellophane paper on top. Mm -hmm. Then you roll it. Yes, yes, yes. Like a pepper grinder. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It cleans the flim and then you put yeah. it. So the glue also was homemade with rice. Rice, rice yeah, yeah. Like we like we used to put in posters. Yeah. 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 I, I once Domadi so got me noodles. From, uh, noodles. In fact, I one recently uh, a reader of uh, mine on Instagram, she saw that old picture and she was saying, Where do you get Kalimpong noodles in Bombay? I said <laughs> I was given to it in Calcutta. So um uh, and and then uh, 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 would you guys cook with it and all that? Like the with the noodles and uh, yes, thing yes, so noodles so, every dinner. So is it like a part of the daily diet of uh, people over there, noodles? Yes, uh, noodles because even uh, street food. Because street as food. I have it in my menu here, yeah, there's something called alu tukka. Yeah. Alu what? So that is a, it's alu tukka. Alu tukka for the, the soup, okay, yes. 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 Okay. So you uh, alu them, you make a gravy out of it and dunk some noodles in. Wow. And is the alu that uh, dam alu sort of thing or is it a, you know, the alu gravy? Yes, the spicy alu dam. 
oh wow so you make a aloo dum and then you put a thukka in it wow so that's isn't it amazing how yeah. how, how how food transitions because thukka is a is a tibetan dish and and in tibet probably not too much of spices would be used then as a, no, no not at all so not at is, all right uh, and and then when the tibetans so this is, move across this is like a very kalimpong thing to do yeah i mean the, you know this is how food evolves i mean nowadays people do fusion food and all of that but uh, one is like what a chef is sitting and doing but the other is what happens naturally as people sort of move and uh, yeah uh, lovely lovely and and then um, you know when did your interest in uh, you know cooking and all of that uh, start i think um <laughs> after class 8 because when we were in hostel once all yeah. the staff had taken a strike or something and there were no food <laughs> we were in sikkim yeah then the sisters had made us cook uh oh. and was so that a better meal i cooked a chili potato i think was that a better meal than what the <laughs> what was that yes, meal yes. a better meal than what the staff put together put to put together the canteen staff absolutely So you made because chili potato. Somebody made a. Uh, yes. Somebody and made somebody what? Somebody else made dal. Ah. Uh, dal, dal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we yeah. were allowed very one sabji, one dal. Yeah, rice. yeah, yeah. So, so chili potato, that. dal, and rice. Yeah. So that so the first time you were a you know you were a chef was when you were in class eight and in school and and you know part of the kitchen in in school. Wow, wow, wow. Yes. Yeah. So. And so uh, the, our nuns uh, were getting angry because we were taking so much ketchup to put in the chili potato. <laughs> But ketchup makes the world go round. I mean, which, yeah. I mean now I I know that it is yeah, people people who who are into food experts and all they look down on uh, ketchup. But but ketchup makes the world go round. Okay, I mean if you have blood sugar and all like me right now, I have to avoid it for a bit. But but ketchup is the magic sauce. I mean. <laughs> so um tell me, tell me uh, at at you know, what age was your mom uh, of what age of yours do you remember your mom getting into the food uh, food business domadi like you know the the first from home and then blue blue poppy at sikkim so how old were you guys yeah. you and your sister sonam she's young i right? was the no, i when yeah so when she had wrong take away mom opened wrong take away i was four years old You are four years. Okay, so wait, uh, I I just want to I I just want to sorry for this thing. So it's spelled as W A N G, but it's actually Wong. It's pronounced as Wong. Yeah. Oh, we always say uh, yeah. Wang. So okay, so from now on, Doma Wong, uh, Sachika Wong, Sachika said the first, but yeah. So so Wong's uh, delivery. So you are in uh, you are in fourth standard. How were you in fourth? Fourth no, standard. I was four years old. Okay, okay. So so what are your memories of uh, mum as a you know running a food business? And were you guys involved? So I always, um, yeah, yeah, joke with mom because when I used to wake up, the house used to smell of momos. <laughs> you know, because they would be in the uh, dining room, uh, just continuously uh, everybody in a circle making momos. And so who's everybody who wakes me up? Ev- everybody is in what? There were people helping mom. Were there like staff or? So we have um, my mom, her friend. We call her Yanchen Anila. Her name is Yanchen Doma, and. Uh, Then we had Somu Dada, who's still with us. Okay. Who we practically was <laughs> there. Thanks to him, I listen to Kumar Sanu song. <laughs> What's his favorite Kumar Sanu song? <laughs> Is it from Ashiki? Um, Is it from Ashiki? <laughs> no, no, it was. <laughs> okay. I think uh, Somu Dada and I used. To, I don't know why he was always heartbroken. He used to listen to <laughs> Why Did You Break My Heart. <laughs> Why did you break my heart? Yeah, yeah. That is Udit Narayan, no, no. <laughs> anyway, was chal- it? Amir, it was that Amir Khan movie where they did that. Yeah, King yeah, Versus yeah. Came out. Why did you break my heart? Yeah, he would always. I don't know. And then <laughs> I have grown up listening to these Dukhia songs. I like, still like Dukhia songs. <laughs> so, so tell us, so tell us about. So you, you were like, uh, you know, you little. Uh, Uh, Puchu, that time Puchu was Puchu, not Sachi. So, but the little Puchu would mm-hmm. wake up, rubbing her eyes, come out and see everyone's making momos. Then would you get yeah, some? So when, um, yeah, I would uh, ask for the fried one for breakfast. Ha ha ha. With ketchup. So what are the fried momos called? What are the fried momos called? It's fried momos only, but the pan-fried ones are called kothe. Kothe. Okay, okay. 
So in a way, it's similar to the Japanese uh, gyoza, you know, the the both things. Gyoza, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. a bit similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even even when in, I was in college and we had momos first, we used to like the fried momos, the western country and all that. So you start the day yeah, with fried momos. I used momos, to have huh? that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, either fried momos or if there's a chow mein order going on, then I'll get whatever order. Hmm. It's at the moment. Chow mein for breakfast. Chow mein for breakfast. You know, people uh, when they talk of Calcutta, they talk of uh, you know breakfast as in luchi alu dum, this that. But but chow mein for breakfast is such a <laughs> Calcutta thing. You know, <laughs> you know the previous days chow mein or you know mothers sending it in tiffin box. It's you know. Yes. 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 And this is chow mini. There was a cook in our house. She used to call it chow mini. Chow <laughs> mini. Okay. So then what would happen? <clears throat> Also, we had some uh, Didi called Bulu Didi. She was from Mitnapur. Okay. She was so thin, but I still remember her carrying huge dishes. You know, like uh, patilas of aluminium yeah, things yeah, yeah. and running around. So these people, four people, I think made the four team. Okay. Okay. One would be one would be uh, rolling out the the one would be filling it. One would be constantly steamer like a. Uh, Replacing the steamers with fresh ones, hmm. so it was a constant production going. I used to wake up. That was the first thing. <laughs> Now I don't like the smell of momo so much. I've just been smelling it since that time. I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> so I must tell you guys, you know, the last time I was in um, Calcutta, which was in February. Ah, uh, so so um, you know, I, and from there I was going to Delhi. So my sister-in-law, who is, I mean, brother and sister-in-law are from Calcutta, and they both love momos. So I said, okay, I'm going to get the Domadi to make momos for you. So I called her up, and I was at ITC, and you know it's Salt Lake, close to where they are. So Domadi woke up at five o'clock, and I think she ground the mutton herself. I don't know if she bought the mutton also that morning. She ground it, she made it, and she was there at the hotel. A <laughs> five-minute time, and I'm woken up. I got a call. Oh, I'm coming down. I quickly put on some clothes, went to the reception, gave her a big tight hug, took the momos. And and I must say that uh, then she was going off uh, for uh, you know uh, her day, so I went up, and then you know I sat there, took like nice plate, fork, you know, sat down, and I had a nice hot steaming mutton momo breakfast, uh, and then I took it to Delhi, and they had it the next day, the day after, and my sister-in-law said, "My God, these momos are so good." And and you know the time when your mom was starting off, uh, you know, uh, like my first exposure to momo was when we were in college. Uh, i mean of course in darjeeling as a kid but but when you were in college so i'm talking of like the period of 92 to 95 so at that time one of the people in our college had told us about uh, you know in in um, uh, elgin road uh, near the stairs stop before robindra shodhan and between bhavanipur where you know there were some momo shops uh, you know operating in the houses run by uh, tibetans and we went there once uh, rainy evening uh, you know four five of us boys from college very hungry little money So we had pork momos, and there was free pork soup. So imagine that you're hungry boys and free pork soup. So we had it, and and, and you know that was the so that was the momo culture which I was uh, exposed to, um, you know, till I left the city in uh, '97. And then when I would go back and I'd ask people to have uh, where should I go for momos because I didn't remember the name of those places. Everyone told me Blue Poppy, Blue Poppy, which uh, of course. Uh, Uh, Doma uh, was running at uh, Sikkim Mouse at that time. So, um, uh, Sachiko, when when you guys were doing the deliveries from home, uh, these Momo restaurants were already sort of west uh, running, right, in Elgin Road, uh, like uh, you know the sit down sort of places. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so your yeah. your clientele okay. was in a way looking at homemade things coming home fresh, and that was a completely different uh, experience. So, I don't think, um, yeah. Like I don't think my mom thought of commercializing huh. it at a level where we have, yeah, like, yeah, with the best yeah. reach now. It yes. was never, so you know, it was a very simple home day because she wanted to stay home with me. She didn't mm. want to go for a job. She started, and then it was wow. just something which she was happy with. People were liking it, so it went on. And and so then and the then the house canteen came. Then things changed. Okay, so 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 a four-year-old Sachiko would get up, uh, you know, wipe her eyes and go to the this thing and see like momos being made, chowmin being mm-hmm. made, and and uh, you know would have that for breakfast. And then would you sometimes take it uh, for tiffin to school? 
to your to your tiffin sometimes and sometimes because sometimes um, yeah i would take friends or when i would take their tiffin to eat it <laughs> yeah 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 because so in school was tiffin exchange was the main thing <laughs> tiffin was the main exchange yeah, yeah, you know tiffin yeah. exchange was the main fun of uh, school and in calcutta the beauty is that there are people from so many different communities like i was in uh, st james's school in my plus 2 and that yeah. a lot of people there was also like uh, a chinese uh, person michael uh, uh, who was there and he was like really strong and he would like in a tug of war help our house win and all that but he used to get all these lovely uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know stewed roast uh, beef and all that so it was great fun and and when you start helping mom out yeah you know in the, did you, when did you start helping out when there was just a Yeah, so salt. Uh, when the salt lake thing was going on, I was I would used to be able to deliver only inside GD block. Okay. Like that is the only way if I wanted to help. Huh. Every delivery I got five rupees. Yeah. Oh, so then you so you started your career as a delivery person. In food, <laughs> you, you started your career. You started your career in food as a delivery person <laughs> before Swiggy and Zomato. So they must have copied your. <laughs> so you were allowed to go to D D Block, and you got five rupees for. How old were you? Yes. How old were I you then? Eight, yeah, seven, eight. Hey, that's a lot of money when you win one is seven, eight, five rupees for delivery. How many deliveries did you have a cycle, or how would you go? Or you'd walk down. Yeah, yeah, I had a cycle. I had so a how, cycle, so I would go down. How many deliveries would you do? Not much, yeah, two. Okay, ten rupees not bad. Ten rupees a day for an eight-year-old <laughs> is not bad at all. I would, yeah. I would yeah. go to the pawn shop and buy five hajmolas and change the money. <laughs> not like I have nothing to save. <laughs> five hajmolas and the other favorite at pawnwalas at that time was those jhal lodgings. You know the orange lodgings and the black yeah. jhal lodgings, yeah, which yeah, would be yeah. like. Uh, you know, chat pata. We, I mean, yeah. those are the things which used to. In Madhya Pradesh, uh, used to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then. Um, In Nepal, uh, it's called. Yeah. yeah. And and then when Sorry. when you, when did you no no when do you start helping in the kitchen or or you know cooking. Cooking, I think, at the age of fifteen. Okay, so was that After just at home or for? Eight. So was that for home or or for the business also? No, for the uh, I just wanted to learn. I think I huh. wanted to do because it was I had some experience getting uh, or taking orders on the phone. But this was first. Then I was uh, I started as a wait staff. Okay, so this was at where the Salt Lake Blue yeah. Coffee or uh, this at uh, was it wait oh, no. staff so at Sikkim House. So this was the Middleton Street. Okay, okay, Middleton Sikkim House, Middleton. Yeah, yeah, that became like such an institution. Started waiting for some time. Huh. Yes. So, yes. I, you know, we didn't realize because that's what mom and I said. We were so busy in the restaurant. Yeah, and and that's day. and that's what I'm saying. Like everyone, like uh, you know, people whom I knew through food uh, and stuff. And I'd say, where should I go for momos? Where should I go for momos? Because I've not gone in a while. Everyone said blue puppy, and and there were people who didn't know you guys. They would just go to blue puppy and eat. And of course, people like Kanishka and all who knew you guys. But even people, say Calcuttans, and who lived in Bombay, and they would go back. So they would go eat there and then come. So obviously they wouldn't know you guys then. But everyone said blue puppies. Like you guys have become a sensation, and you didn't realize it. None of you realized no, it. We didn't. We didn't realize it. <laughs> we our day would start. We would reach work. Work the whole day, 10 p.m. We wouldn't even know it was you know day to evening because there were blinds covered. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And few years we didn't see the day. And day would start when. Uh, what time would your day start in the well, morning? Well, uh, for the staff, we would they would so uh, Sikkim House Canteen the breakfast we also had to serve breakfast. So the day would start at seven a.m. Okay. I would reach at ten, okay. but mom at first would reach at seven to start breakfast, and then till ten a ten p.m. at night. Last order is at nine thirty. So so you started as the wait staff in the beginning, uh, you know, waiting yes. the table. So, I did it so, for a few years, yeah. Yeah. So, so did did you like waiting on tables, or were you waiting to sort of get to the next stage? Uh, I think at first I enjoyed it. Huh. 
but then um, it became a drag because it was the same thing there was nothing to <laughs> there was no like you can't reach the pinnacle of <laughs> no but you can you can you know like uh, like uh, again maybe perhaps you know when you're in the job and even people who are in the wait staff and all that they don't uh, sometimes uh, realize it because you know for you is every day like okay sir what do you want i want three momos one thuppa and uh, you know all of that but uh, honestly like uh, you know uh, one of the major uh, ways where people get like bound to a restaurant and and become loyal is um, of course the food but also uh, the people and then the, your contact is primarily with the yeah, wait staff course, or, or you know the manager sitting at the cash counter so you know that little smile or even the familiar face that you know that okay if i if i give this person the order that she will know that you know i like my momos extra hot or i was just talking about candies this morning and when i was to work from there you know i would order fried eggs and toast so fried eggs are made upstairs then they come down and they do the toast so there is some uh, there's a lady over there silvia so when the fried eggs would come down and i would be working at my table she would call for some reason she called me kalyani sir and it still comes in my bill as kalyani <laughs> kalyani sir so i go running so That's she would funny. see me she would take the bread put it in the toaster pop it and give it to you because she knew that for me the to- hot toast was very important so i'm saying that you know these little gestures yeah. which wait staff do uh, make a lot of sometimes of course i'm sure you must have had difficult customers no, absolutely know? but then <laughs> were there yeah, any difficult there are... customers Yeah, many difficult customers. This is the, this is that. Were there people yeah, trying to yeah. put in many. hair and saying, "Mujhe give me another round"? <laughs> Those sort of people. No, they wouldn't put the hair. But then <laughs> some, I don't. Know, some customers would put a lot of. There was this particular customer. She would put a lot of salt on her thuppa and then say it's too salty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you should say you've had it. You've eaten my lamak kaya. But uh, tell me about few few. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about a few good experiences. So there is uh, any good memories of your wait staff? Good experience days? a lot. I think one of the most treasured customers uh, we can. Yeah, one of the best customers I think is uh, Kanishka because he. Oh, he is from KC, back then. Yeah, KC Kanishka. Yes. So yeah, what did you so like I about him? I remember him coming out with. Uh, Well, he was a very genuine person. You know, he treated you. We didn't know I was the only daughter. But then, as when we were doing the wait stuff, only we didn't get any formal training or such. We were just yeah. mom just told us to act like as if there are guests coming in inside our house, our home. <laughs> you know, you're welcoming That's somebody. That's true. Yes, yes, yes. So we don't have, we don't like. It's not the glass is not coming at the correct angle, maybe or get yeah, 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 our yeah. hands out too much to reach the fourth <laughs> person down the table. You know? But you always have to have that warmth. So when I yes. said you can't reach the pinnacle of um, waiting, it's like that was already because you I was not doing it as a job. It was like yes. I was welcoming guests into one of our homes. Huh. So huh. I, I had done that. Then I wanted to shift to something new, you know. But uh, with Casey coming in, he was he didn't treat me like I'm just the staff. Though he didn't know who I was. It was hmm. mom or I never made it think I have to be known. I would be known slowly in my own time, perhaps. Yes, yes, yeah. So but but I but but Casey is a beautiful person. Yes, so exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So he would order regularly. He would not throw any tantrums. Eat, smile. You know so that that is all you want when you are waiting a table. I think that the person treats you like a normal person. Exactly, and and and, and, and on a lot about the and on the other side, all you want is that the person treats you with a with a bit of warmth. It doesn't matter. Which exactly. angle or how polished the English is or whatever, but the main person is that the person treats with warm. The person knows that you know what is yeah. good. Like if I go to your house and you are feeding me something, you will know what you are feeding, right? I mean, and 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 Correct. stuff. So so what did you want to do next? I mean, uh, from them, uh, you know, I you wanted you. to yeah learn cooking because huh. I just I wanted like I was. Um, Like I wanted to just because I think cooking looks more fascinating standing there, <laughs> you know, tossing noodles yeah. like that was yeah that is the hero job you know. <laughs> cooking is the like I say cooking chefs are the creative like wait staff in advertising is the servicing staff they play a very important role but cooking is the creative yes. Uh, so you, so I was like I want to be there. It was in another room so there were two rooms. The main cooking happened in one room in the kitchen mm. and the other one was half was momos and half was washing. Okay. Okay. 
So mom is like, okay, you get into the kitchen from tomorrow. I got into the kitchen. The staffs were pointing me to the washing table. I'm like, no, no, I want to go to the other room. They're like, no, you start here first. So, so you are the boss's daughter. You are the boss's daughter, mm-hmm. and instead of tossing the noodles and like you know, like Kylie Wong and this, that, and whatever, me uh, no, but button do, button do, pehle. So even as the boss's Correct. daughter, ah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so they say. And Indian... those the chefs who cooked, huh. who cooked then, who taught me, are still cooking for us. Wonderful. So now, now, how do they react? Do they see you as the boss man, or like do you do they see you as a colleague, yeah, or do you yeah. see it, or do they see you as the bachi? We didn't. <laughs> do you yeah, see? Yeah, they bachi? still call me Baidi, which is little sister. But ba- what is it, Baidi? Baidi, like even in Assam. Baini. No? Baini. Okay, in in uh, in yeah, Assam it's Baido. Ah, in Assam is ba- Baido, I think. Yeah. Baido. So they call you little. <laughs> so you were always clear that you wanted to work uh, with mom. It's not that. uh you wanted or did you want to sort of set up something of your own at that point did you have any thoughts on that well i took a break in between yeah i took a break in between i took up tattooing okay so I was show like, us your tattoo i saw your tattoo yeah two years Sh- show us your tattoo i saw a tattoo on your hand i i have <laughs> this one is the momo with the crown wow yes 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 i have wow. one my first tattoo is the <laughs> shin chan Wow! And then there's—is that a cat? Is that a cat or a doggy? Yeah, that's a cat. Oh, baby loaf yeah. and Nimki would be so happy to see that. I have my sister's that. name here. Sonam. And is that a, <laughs> there's a key to your heart? Below Sonam is a key to your heart. Huh? Yeah, no, so we went on a trip with my cousins. Uh, okay. So, oh yeah, and this is my dad. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a what a sweet thing. And 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 what's on top of your dad? Is that a fish? Yeah. Is that a fish? Uh, the green yeah, one. Yeah, that's this? a greedy fish. So he has a he has a greedy bucket of fish. KFC chicken. Ah, <laughs> a fish eating KFC chicken. This has to be a you know a bagali fish. Machli <laughs> babu, <laughs> you know, like the bhajari manna has the machli babu. <laughs> Even your mom has uh, 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 tattoos, right? One of it was also a Buddhist mantra uh, written over there yes, in, in uh, Doma's yes. uh, tattoo. Oh, mani pe mahu. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you became a tattoo artist for a while. Yeah. So, so you you became a tattoo yeah. artist. I went to Chandigarh to practice to work as a tattoo artist. Uh, how was Chandigarh after Calcutta and the hills going to Punjab? Chandigarh was a quite a culture shock, I think. <laughs> Putting it politely. Food. <laughs> like the food is raved about, but I didn't find it great at all. I think, to be honest, you you didn't like the rajma chawal every day, rajma chawal every day, so, um, <laughs> and kulcha every it's morning. Celebrated. I love no, I love rajma chawal, but yes. um, like sometimes I think you need more than rajma chawal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I you know what's a beautiful thing about the media focusing on chefs from across the country now, like. you know from starting with you and then you know people from south india and west and so on is that the chefs eat love rajma chawal mix is going because you know once i was talking with my mom in law and she watches a lot of uh, chefs on tv and she was saying you know rajma chawal that is what all chefs learn a love i said mama because all those chefs are punjabi so they love rajma chawal any other chef will <laughs> not say that we love like rajma chawal okay you might like rajma chawal but you like your own food So how was uh, Chandigarh? How was uh, uh, handling Chandigarh? And you know, it's a completely different culture and uh, north versus the hills and the east. Uh, how how's that? And pretty young you were still then, right? I mean, you're of course still young, but were you still in I your teens? I was twenty. Twenty. Okay. Yeah, I was twenty yeah. that time. I had just turned twenty. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I there also I think I had made I had a partnership with a hair salon. Hmm. So I had my tattoo down, and we would split the profit. Hmm. But the customers coming in would be like, uh, suppose a guy comes in, he'll go, you know, मुझे tattoo बनाना, and I'm like, okay, कैसे type का tattoo चाहिए? <laughs> he his answer would be like, कुछ भी खतरनाक बना दो. 
खतरनाक नॉट हाउ यू गो टू आर टैटू आर्टिस्ट फॉर यू नो यू कैन नॉट आस्क फॉर एनीथिंग खतरनाक व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी ऑन योर बॉडी फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ खतरनाक मींस डेंजरस सो दोस इज नॉट विद मी या इमेजिन इफ समवन कम्स टू योर किचन एंड सेज अभी कुछ भी खतरनाक बना दो सो द मोमो में डालो योर <laughs> put all the chilies and and lots of momo sauce would make it not really cut that na then you have to block the toilet for them after that <laughs> so so then uh, when did you decide to come back why i mean did you come back from calcutta from there from chandigarh yes i came back to calcutta having realized that i think i should stick to food <laughs> <laughs> yes and and you wanted to work with mom Yeah, you wanted to mark or work with mom, or did you, uh, or were you wondering what to do in food? Did you want to work I with your mom, mother? I wanted to, yeah, yeah. I wanted to work with my mom because since our noodle factory shut down, unfortunately, okay. the grandpa's factory, there had yeah. to be a legacy going, you know. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So, so, so in a way, that's what so that's what drove you. Huh? That, her. So that's what drove uh, Sachiko, who was. you know the legacy she seen as little puchu she wanted to carry it on as such a wonderful one so that was what drove you yes so so you you spoke to mom what did mom say what did doma say then about your plans yeah i didn't speak about it as such we i was i used to just work it was just um, i think taken for granted that i would be joining it since <laughs> that is the only thing i have been seeing constantly since i was young hmm so it just fell very natural and you stopped your formal schooling by then right yeah you said that uh, yes yes i stopped so we about so, so after, I did my after o the level o level which is yeah, after the 10th okay. o level i did that and then uh, i joined and there was maybe i thought i'll take a break and then i'll go back huh. but then as i started working i realized that this is what i have to do for the rest of my life yeah so with whatever little i have learned in school i think i can use that so of course now the world is changed quite a bit it's just not hard like not hard work anymore it's a lot of i mean networking also you know yes. the social life is also as you grow up plays a big part on your yeah. uh, circle you can't just sit down and hmm. you get in a hole and work hard like how i have we have just been <laughs> yeah yeah i mean <laughs> no that's true i mean i'm 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 much uh, elder to you but i think uh, i think there are two things one is that um, uh, i think we come from a generation where first of all there was no social media so networking meant actually being there and then you have to be that sort yeah. of an extroverted uh, person and and i think that i don't know uh, i think that it's also a bit of like in my case um, you know the the general sort of calcutta uh bengali middle class sort of thing in your case bad and the fact that you come from the hills where life is uh, you know a lot more simpler and not more pure uh, i would like to believe um for us uh, you know networking doesn't come easily like for me also like i put stuff on social media simply because I, i mean that's what i love to do just as you like to make momos but uh, it's not for networking i mean networking on food networking on social media is very different i mean then you'll be tagging all the top chefs getting photographs with them and uh, yeah but the thing is like you know your mom became a legend you became a silent legend and like i said i mean out of nowhere uh, i mean nowhere for the rest of the country not for us uh, you are in the top 30 list of young chefs uh, in in the mint and you know most of the other chefs there are chefs who are i won't say more accomplished but you know they have studied in culinary schools or more abroad, exposed, or more to, exposed um, and they've run restaurants which have more funding more more famous and 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 stuff and i'm so happy that they've sort of um, focused on uh, someone like you because i mean you are representative you. you your mom you, uh, you know your your staff your somuda and everyone they are all representative of people who've been feeding us and these are the restaurants where people go to eat you know and and you can't have restaurants where people go for a food experience uh, just defining what food is all about because you know that is where creativity in food happens but all of this represents creativity in food so for example uh, you know sachiko you have the 
alu thukka which i'm going to have next time definitely to uh, to yeah. but 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 uh, you know that is also creativity when the when the tibetans came yeah. to kalimpong and you know they saw the local uh, you know uh, alu dum and said that why not put it there okay so so uh, then you started cooking in the kitchen and uh, you started with washing dishes and then when did you get a little bit of a promotion to go beyond washing dishes i think uh, for six months i washed dishes uh -huh. and then you had you graduate to cutting okay prep uh -huh. and, and and cutting is also very uh, like in, in a in a tibetan restaurant uh, you know cutting is very precise no like you know mincing the meat then the you know the the scallions yeah. then the chili flakes i mean it's it's like very specialized cutting yeah. right any injuries ever while cutting did you ever need some bandaid and that all or were you like you know yeah uh, many times many times because when you are cutting you go like this no uh, and sometimes uh, you slice off this part then it's just yeah. there is yeah 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 slightly yeah. only yeah, once only once while trying to uh, you know clean up a pork rib at home i cut my finger and i was like bap re then there was a i called a friend kenaz was traveling at that time and she said put haldi so i put haldi then i called my other friend who's a doctor yeah. and he said okay you come to my house and get this uh, particular bandaid and stuff so i got into the car it was night and i drove to the medical store and then i went to go to his house and in my head i'm imagining that i'm amitabh bachchan you know in the end of every movie is like <laughs> agni pad this that amitabh bachchan would be like beaten up and you know blood is falling from everywhere yeah. uh, you know shot in this hand and with one hand you were taking the car and you know come <laughs> so and one time and i said it was like saying every second time oh my god you know the chefs and cooks i mean your scars yes yes so um, is there any uh, tell me this uh, you know uh, now that you are like uh, you know running a restaurant and then you know you are training people so um uh you know each of these sta three stages uh, which you went through which is waiting then um uh, cutting no washing then cutting so um are there any uh, lessons which you learned from there as as a as a you know as a you know as a chef as an entrepreneur as a professional as a human being uh, what are the lessons which these things taught you i think while waiting i learned that if you are nice to people people will be nice to you 90% of the time yes there yes. can be a hurt 10% yeah 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 100% 90% of the time yeah so that works in and then washing washing dishes you have to scrub very hard otherwise the grease does not go so for the aluminum thing you use a steel wool as for steel you can use scotch brite so that is <laughs> no but it's also very uh, it's also a very important task because like um, you know i mean for hygiene there are two aspects as a as a cast diner when you're sitting down you want everything to be clean whether it's you know the bone china in an itc or a taj or like in a you know a thing like yours or even when you're going to a street food bar you want to see that the chal patas are clean washed yeah. and all that um and and then that gives you a sense that the kitchen is clean so uh yeah, yeah and and, and hard work like i said no substitute for hard work if you want to clean up your life you have to work hard okay so now philosopher uh, philosopher okay. sachiko will tell us sachiko uh, guru uh, swami oh, sachiko no. <laughs> that want you to learn from cutting cutting was like i i am a little bit of snob when it comes to cutting because it has to be cut like every dish has its own way of cutting in mm. chinese you can entertain but then mostly fried rice has to have the cube one so it's mostly about knowing what dish you want to cook and then you know how the how you want the vegetables to be cut can you give so us an example of a vegetable which needs to be cut in one way for a dish and cut in another for a dish yeah like uh, for noodles when you are cutting chow mein it has to be thin like the noodle so that it okay. eats well ha huh. right like long long patla patla so all, all the vegetables, vegetables have to be long long also. long correct ah, so and it, in a, it, and yeah. it cooks well but in a fried rice then you cut the same things in cubes ah i will remember this i will remember this if you <laughs> cutting for chowmin because i've never done that long long i normally always do chop 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 so i'm going to remember this okay uh, and and anything else uh, from your um, 
speech. What, what is the importance of uh, chopping? Like, what do you, uh, is there anything which you would learn, which you would like to then share uh, to, you know, people who want to be cooks or chefs or, you know, in the food business, that why is it important to get this right? Because uh, it matters, like, the cooking time, mm -hmm. it takes a difference. Because when you're making fried rice, it's cubed, right? Yes. So then it cooks together with the rice. Okay. But if we have, if we cut it in a thin way, the rice cooks later and those vegetables, because they are thin, they are hitting the wok faster, they are wilting uh, faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, the so it, it almost makes, makes for, yeah, the, yeah. So almost like a dish is, you know, made or marred by the way you uh, cut it. In yes, a, in a so way. the morning, uh, before you open the kitchen, the two hours you use for prepping is hmm. the most important because you need to finish cutting everything and when the order comes, you need your stations ready. You wow. need your vegetables on one side, you need your sauces on one side. So it's so much about planning and the pre-work. I mean, uh, so, you know, uh, yeah, when you were a child and you would see the chef tossing the noodles and, and we all see chefs on TV or open restaurants and we want to be, you know, that person. But the fact of the matter is that what that final dish comes on the table Uska calm has started much earlier from sourcing the right noodle to chopping the yes. vegetable right, the meat right, you know, getting the sauce ready, boiling it to the right thing till the final act. Yes. You know, everyone sees the final act, but that um, long thing, if anything went wrong, the final act would not be right. No, I mean, now that you are doing the right. final act, if you imagine, you know, the order comes in and you're going to make your lovely pork noodles and then you see, are Hey, who's who's cut this lumba lumba vegetables today for the noodles? What will I do? <laughs> you have to start and chopping it again. <laughs> wow, fabulous. So 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 then we um, do that sometimes when there uh, are newbies joining. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. That happens so, sometimes. So then in your in your career, then what, what happened next? Like from then to from cutting to becoming a, a cook and then you know becoming sort of like the head chef sort of thing. So how, how did that transition happen? Uh, I think till Blue Poppy was there, I had learned and I had started by, I was doing small kiosks and the Blue mm. Poppy Salt Lake I was managing that time. Mm. And then uh, when Blue Poppy Thakali started, yeah, then I took over, I think. As in, fa in, in fact, Doma would say that when Thakali started, she would tell me even when they were doing the, you know, setting it up, she would say that this my girls are doing or girl is doing. And and first of all, the decor, the, the interior decor, she said that. Uh, was that you or uh, Sonam or both of you? The, the yeah, we interior. We did it together. You did it together. So she used to tell me that, you know, this right. is their thing. And I remember when I first went there, it, 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 I, I told Doma that, you know, I get the feeling that I'm going into someone's drawing room or like, you know, I'm going to your house. Uh, for a pop-up or something like yeah. that. It, that is the feeling. There was some so, seating on the floor, some on the tables. Yeah. Yes. And very different from the, the Blue Poppy Canteen, which you guys ran till the piece ran out because that was more government and, you know, blinds and all that. But this had a very cheerful, yeah. like a young, uh, you know, a person's uh, drawing room who's living alone perhaps uh, and, you know, making it her own way or his own way uh, versus, uh, yeah. you know, the parents. Yeah. And and then um, so, so this, tell me about uh, that experience um, because Blue Poppy Thakali is now uh, I, I guess your biggest restaurant. Of course, there's Blue Poppy at Siliguri, uh, which is there. And and is there anything else apart yes. from these? Please tell us we about that. We have a Blue Poppy Express. Huh. That is a delivery. Cloud, just a cloud kitchen. Okay, that's a cloud yeah. kitchen. And then and uh, the you cloud... you've also the confectionery, the uh, Boma. Yes. The Boma Asian yes. Bakery, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Which is named after little Boma, um, who, who had come on the video two years back. Right now, she's with uh, Doma in Siliguri. <laughs> so how was that experience of running? Uh, because you guys also conceptualize it. And like, you know, Thakali, I, I think uh, mom used to say that you also trying to bring in a more Himalayan approach and go beyond Tibet. So, you know, bringing in the Nepali food right. and the Nepali aludam and the yeah. shell roti and stuff like that. So tell us a bit about yeah. that. How, how was that experience? So when uh, we got the opportunity to open Blue Poppy Thakali, I just wanted to bring my best memories, which are my childhood, into play. 
So okay. Our Kalimpong house had wooden tiles, wooden flooring. Yes. So you put you did wooden flooring. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes, there's wooden flooring. Then um, there we had these curtains with the eight lucky signs. Okay. With this lucky sign. So I've made sure that is in the counter. Okay. Because I've just taken small aspects and just incorporated it. And also food, because Kalimpong is such an amalgamation of so many cultures. It's so mixed. There are Chinese people living in, there's um, Nepalese, there's Tibetan, there's some Bengali population Marwa too. Marwari also, I'm guessing. Marwaris, Mar yes. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Marwaris. Yeah, because a lot of trade happens over there. And too. there are many Muslim influences. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like our neighbors were uh, from UP. Mm -hmm. So you were trying to bring in all of that food uh, over there in in Takali. Uh, all of that, yes. But then yes, uh, more a uh, more uh, mixture of you know because not only Chinese Tibetan we could get in thalis also, mm -hmm. and then the sel roti alu dum because I used to love sel roti. Yeah, but I yeah, would yeah. get it only during Diwali. <laughs> Will you explain to people a bit uh, what a cell roti is? I mean, it it looks in a sense a bit like a pretzel, pretzel just to give people an idea. You go to yeah, the kind of you know Bengu uh, Topi Thakali Instagram page. I'm sure you'll find uh, pictures of it. Or you go to my blog, finally chalk when I've eaten there, you'll find pictures of it. But tell us a bit about. It's a very interesting thing to have with aloo dum because you normally you ex you um, expect something flat, you know, like you know, like a roti or a puri yes. or, or a paratha the or even bread. Jalebi. Yeah, but this is like like almost like a jalebi, <laughs> you know, that is a savory jalebi. So yeah. tell us a bit about that. Yeah, tell us a bit so about it's, that. Uh, made with rice flour, made with, like soaked rice. Uh, Okay. So you traditionally it's made with so made with soaked rice. So you soak night or soak rice overnight, hmm. and then you grind half of it. You keep the you grind one very fine one half and one half very close, and okay. then you add your uh, cardamom, sugar, ghee, milk. It's hmm. like a pancake batter type, and then you roll it out in circles, like with your hands, wow. or you can use a bowl. Yeah. If you and and the mug could have many different, yes. No, no, go ahead. You're using many different. Hmm. Many different people use different things as whatever hmm. they are comfortable to for pouring the batter out. What 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 do you use? I use my hands. <laughs> best best. And how do you eat it then? You you take a bite of this and a aloo of this, or like I've I've always wondered that uh, you know when I go there, how should you eat it? Yes. So you uh, just take a you. You break a small piece of it, you dip it in the, the aloo, you either smash it or something, yeah, you break it. And then you take a little bit of the mula, muli ka achar you get with it. Yeah. Just dip that also once and eat it. So then the wow. star spicy and sweet hits together. Wow. So, so listen, guys, you will almost never find Sachiko coming to your table when you are Thakali to explain this to you. So, so remember this when you go there. Thakali means kitchen, right? Uh, thakali means kitchen. The word Sorry? thakali means the word thakali means. No, no. So thakali is thakali is a region in uh, the Mustang Valley in Nepal. Oh yes, yes. That yes, the set the set meal is very famous there. So why did you name it uh, thakali? Because the identity of your family is so much with blue poppy and Tibetan food and all of that. So why did you name the restaurant after a region in Nepal? Oh, whose idea was it? Because uh, it was no, your it idea. It was my idea because yes, because uh, there are restaurants in Nepal called thakali which serve thali. So once ah. you know when you hear the word thakali, you know that you're going to get a thakali thali. Yes, but like but, your, yeah, thali, but but yeah, but but your restaurant thali, is not thali. a your restaurant is not just a Nepali only restaurant. So uh, I'm just saying that. Uh, yeah, so wasn't that a poppy is there for the Chinese and Tibetan? Ah, yes, yes, yes. In fact, I must tell people of Chinese and Tibetan that uh, unfortunately, like in the last few years, whenever I've gone to Calcutta and I've gone to the you know the tra tra traditional uh, famous Chinese restaurants, and I don't want to name them because everyone's working hard and then you know they they are running full touchwood. But uh, you know, when I when I go there, like you know, everything's too fried and too much of color and too much soda and Ajinomoto. And every time I have heart heartbreak, so hai. 
hard hard burn once in my hotel room at night i woke up and i thought that i'll still have the dagger and my wife was there but she didn't have the dagger but i said quickly give me a you know little cup of milk from the <laughs> coffee thing pat 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 so uh, during the lockdown my mom uh, wanted uh, chinese food during the pujas uh, and uh, second uh, lockdown year and my option was either to order it from a five star which i could have um but then uh, by then blue poppy was running so i got in touch with uh, doma and honestly i like you know one tends to know doma more uh, unless you are of course a regular there so uh, doma said okay so i said what, what does she want so mom wants like what any bengali wants she wanted uh, noodles she wanted fried rice she wanted fish chili right. sort of thing and momos so uh, okay so then uh, it went to mom and then next day i said how was the food so mom said it was uh, very good um and you know that and and uh, she said it's good that you also told her to put less oil so my mom's in her mid 70s or so you know and she's very conscious of food and diabetes and all that so i said you know i didn't tell them to put less oil or anything like that but i just placed an order with uh, doma because i knew that the food would be good then i you know i, I told doma that mom really liked it yeah. and uh, you know and and uh, she said that it was less oil so i didn't tell you so doma said i knew and uh, i am not going to the restaurant because she, i think during the lockdown she would not go because of health yeah risk. we do ask her yeah, not yeah she said you uh, you know so so she said i just told the uh, sachiko and sachiko knows you and knows about your mom and she did whatever so uh, so this in a way sums up the wong family the legacy and and what sachiko is taking ahead so as so a sachiko i think the lockdown period in a sense was the first time when you were like fully alone right right as as a big boss because uh, you know you are the captain or whatever you want to say because uh, you know because of uh, comorbidity and all of that you, know, you your your friend uh, and your friends and so on and all told mom that no coming to the restaurant because this is when restaurant was operating as lock delivery to start with so oh, how did that yeah. feel to suddenly have see because you were running the restaurant but you always perhaps knew that mummy is here if something happened yeah 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 <coughs> So how was that? How was that experience? That was um, um, experience was like I had uh, gone back to a kitchen after a long time. I would be there, but uh, my prepping skills, you know, had got um, I did it had deteriorated a little bit if I may say. Of course, of course. Because yes. I was not doing that every day. Yeah. And then yeah. five guys just left suddenly as soon yeah. as the lockdown opened. We had kept yeah. the staff. Yeah. And they said. after they also want to go home which is fair for them you know yeah 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 i cannot expect them to stay 3 months locked up in a lockdown and when it finally opens to come work back and not visit their family because we have been with our family it's fair for them yes, to go to yes so but then uh, the core team was there like ganesh daju thapa daju who taught me how to cook they are still there i had joined uh, so muda had joined the kitchen we were all and so muda was at home helping because there was uh, there was no maid also that time so, so would he at least send you some handling home well, was he sending you some kumar sanu songs on whatsapp at least if you are missing that no, kumar sanu he song doesn't. <laughs> no 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 <laughs> he no, 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 no. shifted to <laughs> he shifted to what he shifted to watching nepali movies on youtube now oh so now nepali songs now nepali songs Nepali movie songs, yeah. though. Acha. So anyway, so you're telling us about that experience of uh, you know from running the restaurant to getting back and doing everything, and how was that? Uh, you know yes. that, yeah. How was that? How was that experience? That that felt that felt good, you know, because we were resting. We were resting at home for three months, hmm. and then to be able to get up and do something and look forward to doing something was great. I think. Hmm. But then, to when we used to go to deliver the because the, the cars were not allowed inside the compound, yeah, yeah, so we had to go yeah. to the gate and give the customer. That was also scary, you know. There was that time was so paranoid. Such, and was such so fear, paranoid. yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. I mean, dreadful day. So you would go and deliver yourself. I mean, all of you. And just you. outside, uh, whoever's yeah. free, just go outside yeah, yeah, and yeah. hand the packet and come. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yes, 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 yes. yes. I mean, those are dreadful days. and then how did it feel when finally you could open the doors for customers and and i'm sure all the loyals must have rushed in in the beginning and uh, you know how did that feel 
that felt very nice because i really couldn't wait to get back yeah. you know um, life has been a constant going to work is as normal as waking up you know for us yes yes like subah uth ke dukaan hi jana hai there is nothing mm. else you do sometimes we take a break mm. now i take a break every week once a week i take off mm. Mm. but before there was no concept of that and then after doing that you just do nothing for three months yeah you can't wait to no. get back and that is this is normal life for us you know no i can fully understand because you know uh, when i left my corporate job of market research and uh, you know then i moved into food writing so food writing was not my immediate plan so in the beginning it was a break and then i didn't know what to do wow. and you know sitting at home whole day i started missing my earlier routine which i didn't love i'm like you i mean it's not that i was passionate about it but i started missing it so i know what you uh, what you what you mean i mean i did not tell me one i have one secret i need to know that why is it that when i have the shaktas and the momos at uh, you know blue puppy or the nepali thali and my then my you know the the po, uh, po, popos fried rice named after your grandpa popos fried rice popos fried rice and then my favorite which is the noodles with uh, you know pork i'm going to go to calcutta only when riya banerjee my dietitian says okay you can go and have noodles i'll say say yeah go go and book the <laughs> rajdhani and go but Then we just. Why is it that when I have those day, uh, those meals, huh, and then I go back home or to the hotel or I take a flight, there is no memory of the meal except happy memories. While if I go to you know, other Chinese restaurants over there, let's not name them, but I end up with a lot of heartburn, a lot of heartache. It's almost like you know, uh, an affair, love affair ending badly. So what is the secret? <laughs> Why is why? What is the secret behind your kitchen? Why is there no heartburn and acidity? <laughs> <laughs> why well, that? Because um, I think when we like how I said when we were trained to be wait staff, we had said only one. We were said only one thing, right? To teach teach them like they are coming to our home. Same thing goes into the kitchen. Also. What you will not eat, you will not serve. Fabulous words, you know. I mean, they will teach you lots and lots of tough stuff in culinary school if you go to and and things like that. But this is the one thing: if, if you know, don't serve anything which you wouldn't serve uh, at home. So, Sachiko, before I finish, it was lovely talking to you. Um, uh, one last question: that um, going ahead, how do you see life? Because I somewhere I felt that you you know you're you're not feeling this pressure about the need to. uh socialize because you know it's been very different for you and your mom you've just been working in the kitchen working in the kitchen working in the kitchen and whatever has grown so you're wondering that perhaps is there a need for me to be more active in social media uh mm-hmm. then at least who's like kalyan will not think that my name is puchu but it's actually sachiko <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but but also like uh, you know you you've also had this fabulous opportunity and I must uh, credit uh, mint for this for you know putting you in the top 30 list of chefs where most chefs are you know the the more conventional chefs so going ahead yeah. what is your what is your plan what is your uh, dream what is it that you would like to do now as i said we were uh, i wanted to take on the legacy so then and then i had become stagnant you know because i didn't know what route to take uh, maybe we could have given franchises maybe we could have taken in investors but then the company or the brand we worked so hard for with a wrong calculation or a wrong step of mind to do it perhaps you know if i'm not careful mm. with it so then now partnering up with manisha has helped me a lot it has uh, helped me broaden my horizon see things in a different way that there is a world outside just uh, running a restaurant does not mean just cooking you'll have to do there is a lot of back end work which i have just <laughs> Give me, give, give, give us an, give us an example of something which you've learned uh, now, uh, which which you feel will help you expand. I mean, uh, or or at least grow as a restaurant here and help you in your dreams of taking SOP. the legacy. SOP. 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 Yes. Standard operation procedure. Yes, I didn't know we had a we had to have like a strong iron will, iron hold uh, SOP. You know. Uh, it was as I said. It was a very casual thing. You come work, treat them like guests. There is no, 
Yeah. But then as you hire staff, you realize that you can't, as you get bigger, you cannot be like, oh, I try my best to make it like a family, but then everybody doesn't feel that way. Yes. Slowly, yes. slowly, it is, it just depends on commercials at one point of time. Hmm, 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 hmm. So then and that's true. Working, and as you grow. And anything else? Anything else? Yeah. So then we, yes, we are planning to maybe go the franchisee route now because um, we would love to see our momos reach other places also. <laughs> yes. In the yes, sorry yes. state they are in right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like we Mumbai girls wait for like Domadi to come and well, she comes on holiday, but she is like making momos all the time and, and feeding <laughs> us. So, so uh, Sachiko, it was uh, wonderful uh, talking to you. And while I called you Sachiko here, mm-hmm. but I am going to call you, you. Uh, Puchu when we meet. <laughs> and and, uh, <laughs> and and lots of love for me and, and everyone uh, who is like a big, big fan of, uh, you know, the Blue Puppy uh, Thakali legacy and may you and Manisha and everyone you, sort of uh, you know uh, really uh, succeed in your uh, dream of uh, you know expanding and I'm sure you'll make it to many more lists but more than that uh, may you make many 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 uh, more uh, customers uh, uh, you know really happy uh, and feel at home with the food uh, you that deliver in whichever format and and anyway so folks that's uh, Sachika Seth uh, Sachiko Seth uh, uh, you know daughter of Doma Wang. Doma Wong, who runs uh, uh, Blue Puppy Thakali now, uh, you know, in Kolkata. And, uh, you know, there's food from different parts of the hills. Uh, there's also Blue Puppy at Siliguri. There's a Blue Puppy Express uh, Cloud Kitchen in uh, Kolkata as well. And uh, hopefully the next time we interview her, we'll be telling about uh, telling you about all the other cities where uh, they operate, starting with Mumbai. Huh? If you don't start with Mumbai, no interview. Yes, fingers crossed. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> God, God bless. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.